the major development, major evolution in the therapy of APL will be the development of oral arsenic, which is being done, I think, originally in Hong Kong. But, and then, basically, you will have a regimen that will be purely oral. Can, Atras, obviously, uh, uh, given by mouth, and arsenic will be given by mouth. And so now, you will have a perfectly oral regimen for treatment of APL. I think that will be the major change in therapy. And I think the other change will be as the effectiveness of uh, the therapy of atrin arsenic for at least low-risk APL becomes more obvious, there will be less need for this monitoring uh, that goes on now. There's an old saying that it's, you don't want to do a pregnancy test in a man, and it's the same idea that why would you want to do all these monitoring if the disease is not going to recur. The biggest challenge we have in APL now is diagnosing patients early and getting them to treatment early. As we mentioned before, the chances for cure are very high, and most patients who are not cured actually die in the first month or so of, the, of their diagnosis because of bleeding complications. Getting to those patients earlier and giving them adequate treatment is probably our best strategy to improve survival in patients with APL. In addition, currently there are studies that are ongoing with an oral arsenic formulation that would be a lot easier for our patients to take than the intravenous daily infusion. These days, atrin and arsenic are often referred to as a paradigm of bench-to-bedside research. But the truth is a bit different. These drugs were both developed in China uh, in the late 1980s. Actually, they go back much further in Chinese medicine. But they were first published from China uh, in the 1980s, and I think it's fair to say that they were greeted with disbelief. At that time, China was not the China of today. It was really almost a third world country. And people said, these results are too good to be true. They, you know, they don't know what APL is. And it wasn't until the results were repeated in the West that people began to see that, in fact, the Chinese were correct. But, so obviously, if it were a paradigm of bench-to-bedside research, well, then they wouldn't have been greeted with the skepticism. It would be, oh, these people are so brilliant. Obviously, it's going to work in the clinic. They're geniuses. But in fact, the attitude was, they're probably wrong. This will never work in the clinic. But it did. And I think the lesson is, is that as many, oftentimes, research goes in the opposite direction. Rather than going from bench to bedside, it goes from bedside to bench. And there are other examples as well that we could give if you want. But the point is, and of course my interest is clinical research, um, that I think it's a mistake for funding to be given exclusively for laboratory-based research. There are many interesting clinical questions that arise, not only regarding treatment, but other aspects of care. So if I can digress, for example, many year, for many years, people with AML were told they had to eat a neutropenic diet, which basically means they can't eat fresh fruits and vegetables. Well, in Houston, we did a study that had no laboratory basis at all, where we randomized people between a neutropenic diet and a regular diet, and there was absolutely no difference. And that really makes difference in people's lives, people who like fresh fruits. And likewise, today, even today, the standard treatment for AML is people stay in the hospital for a month. But that's something else that we did research on, and it turns out there's absolutely no reason for them to do that. And so they can spend a lot more time out of the hospital. And these studies are not in vogue because they're not immunotherapy, they're not molecular genetics, they're not targeted therapy. But that they influence the way practice is done is indisputable. And as I said, I'm certainly not necessarily disinterested, but I think that there's real, it's sad that so little funding is spent by the NCI on these kind of endeavors that are really very important uh, and probably more likely to be successful than many targeted therapy trials.